Back over the last, say, two, three years or so, we have managed to get through COVID. We are still managing and dealing with the after effects of uh, the ongoing Russian war in the Ukraine. At the same time, though, I guess maybe the sort of not so good news is rates are still high and rising. We just had the BOE hike up to four and a half percent hours ago. Uh, we've got volatility still uh, in play. And at the same time, financial conditions, liquidity is looking tighter. You're saying that all this adds up to a challenging outlook. Would you agree that this whole crisis to do with the U.S. debt ceiling makes the outlook even more challenging? On that, I would definitely agree. Uh, I mean, the outlook is challenging. At the same time, uh, the financial sector so far has coped relatively well, right? I mean, the origin of many of the shocks that we've had to face in the financial sector, there's not much we can do about it. I mean, shocks are part of life. They create volatility. We regret that very much. But at the same time, we also expect the financial system to be able to cope with that volatility. And on that score, at least those institutions that have been subject to the financial reform agenda that we rolled out after the global financial crisis, at least for those institutions, I would say, so far, so good. Despite all the volatility, despite the massive increase, the unprecedented increase in, uh, in interest rates and therefore tightening of financing condition, so far, so good. But this U.S. debt crisis is not helping. Uh, definitely, if that crisis were to happen, but let me first say that I have full confidence in the U.S. authorities huh, to avoid that crisis or at least going it into, uh, let's say, an exponential uh, problem. But it will create volatility. That is huh, without a doubt. Uh, that volatility yeah, is, not definitely, is definitely not welcome. Mm. So if it does come to pass uh, and they don't come to any sort of resolution, there will be the first ever in history default on U.S. debt. Yields will spike literally, uh, Janet Yellen has called uh, the consequences catastrophic. All hell literally is uh, going to break loose. Yields will uh, spike and nothing else. And that, of course, has an effect on your bailiwick, which, which would be banks. Yeah, well, again, I'm not going to speculate on huh, what is going to happen, what is not going to happen. The banks huh, have to be resilient in order to be able to cope with shocks uh, like this. This would, of course, be the mother of all shocks. Mm. So let us agree uh, that we hope that this financial system will not have to cope with, uh, with these shocks. But so far, we have significantly strengthened the solvency, the liquidity of the financial institute, the core of the financial sector being the banks. Again, I think the events of the last few months, uh, they show the value of having a full a timely and a consistent implementation of, for instance, the Basel capital rules that the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision has issued. And I am confident uh, that, uh, let's say, uh, bearing really, really dramatic apocalyptic situations, that the financial system uh, will stand its, uh, its place. But you said also that bank prudential and also uh, resolution frameworks, more work needs to be done. Can you be a bit more specific exactly what kind of work more needs to be done? Yeah, whenever there's turbulence in the financial sector, of course, it behooves us to take a step back and to look at what has actually happened and where there are any lessons that we can draw from uh, the turbulence. It's clear from the problems in the regional banks uh, in the United States that they, these are, that teaches us something on, let's say, liquidity uh, regulation and the, the speed with which deposits can actually be uh, withdrawn, the importance of quantifying, measuring and monitoring interest rate risk in the banking book, um, the issue about sort of hidden losses and uh, unrealized losses, uh, hold to maturity versus mark-to-market -market accounting. That's a whole set of issues that the Basel Committee is looking into. The Credit Suisse case, on the other hand, has taught us something on resolution. And the FSB is the resolution authority. The key attributes of effective resolution is the global standard uh, that is in place and where the FSB is, let's say, the owner of, uh, of that standard. Well, we've seen an important case. And we have to look at that case to understand exactly what was happened. And we have to be open-minded as to whether that will require some fine-tuning mm. of the rules that are in place.